I took 24,268 individual day trades and I produced just under $12.5 million in gross profit. Those results are not typical, but in today's episode, I'm gonna extract the data from all of those trades to share with you the strategies that are working in today's market and to give you guardrails that you can implement in your own trading today. These are the rules that I follow that have led to my success as a momentum day trader. So we're gonna jump right in with rule number one, knowing the day of the week that I make the most money. And my goal as a trader who is trying to produce consistent income is that I finish each week in the green. I understand that not every single day will be a green day. I'll have some red days, but at the very least, I wanna finish each week in the green and I wanna finish each month in the green. And of course, I wanna finish each year in the green. So what I do on Monday morning, because I'm starting from zero, is I ease into the market slowly. I take a few trades just to dip my toe in the water. And if I find some success, I start to lean in a little bit. So generally on Mondays, I produce a smaller profit. I'm building a cushion for the week. On Tuesdays, if Monday was good, I step up to the plate a little bit more. And on Wednesday and Thursday, I am at peak performance before I cool off going into the weekend on Friday. I don't wanna screw up on Friday and give up four days of progress. So I reduce my risk and that's partly because I wanna go into the weekend with some confidence, feeling good like I finished the week strong. A big part of trading is maintaining the headspace. It's the mental game. One of the things that I've learned in all of my years of trading is that the people who make the most money are the ones who need it the least. And this is a really frustrating and sad reality, but it's the case because people who don't need the money are not desperate. They're not as likely to give in to the emotions of fear and greed. They're just able to trade from the genuine interest of trading the market. And so unfortunately, for traders that aren't in that place by default, because you're not rich already before you start trading, and I certainly wasn't, we have to kind of fake it till we make it, which means we have to do everything possible to preserve our mental game to keep ourselves focused. And that means knowing when to push hard and knowing when to ease off the throttle. Rule number two the time of day to trade and knowing when to quit. So if you asked me three years ago, Ross, what's the best time of day to trade? I would have told you from 9.30 until about 10.30 in the morning, one hour, it's the opening range. And the reason the open historically has been such a strong time of day to trade is because that's when stocks are reacting to breaking news that came out overnight. However, in the last few years, what we've seen is that as soon as a company has news, and news headlines often come out at 7 a.m., at 8 a.m., and at 9 a.m., that as soon as the news is released, traders are jumping on because they don't want to miss that opportunity. And so as a result, the window has actually gotten bigger. Currently, my window where I make the most money is between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. It's a two-hour window. Now I can start trading as early as about seven. Prior to 7 a.m., we don't see a lot of volume. And one of the reasons is because a lot of the commission-free brokers don't even let people start trading before 7 a.m. So 7 a.m. is when volume starts to come into the market. And then I found that after that opening range, you know, around 10, 30, 11, it really cools down and it's slow for the middle of the day. Now, historically, we've had what's called power hour. That's from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. going into the close. And that's when we do see some increased volatility, but it's more from investors and swing traders who are establishing new positions and closing positions based on the daily charts that are just getting ready to form. So active day traders, power hour, in my experience, has not been the time when I perform the best. My window of opportunity is from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Knowing that if it's 945 and I haven't taken a trade yet, I know that my window is closing. So it's really important to know when to walk away. Walking away sooner is one of the biggest lessons I wish I had learned earlier in my career. The reality is if you have a goal of making $200 a day, 50,000 a year or 400 a day, 100,000 a year. As soon as you hit that goal, there's nothing wrong with packing up and walking away. So many traders hit their goal 
keep trading, and then slowly give it back until they finish the day in the red. An important lesson to learn is to, to walk away, especially when you're coming to the end of your window when you make the most money. And for me, it's between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Rule number three, know your sweet spot or your strategy. When I started, I had a small account and I couldn't afford to buy 50, 60, $70 a share of stocks. My goal was to buy a $5 stock and sell it at 550 for a 10% gain. It's very hard to get a 10% gain day trading, 50, 60, $70 stocks. It's not impossible, but it's pretty hard. Where I found the most opportunity was on the lower price stocks. And my sweet spot where I make the most is between five and 10. Generally speaking, I will trade between two and 20, but I found under two, I don't make a lot. And over 20, I do make money trading. And certainly there were examples like GameStop that was over 20 and I did well on that. But those are the exception, not the norm. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I know the sweet spot for the momentum strategy that I trade and stocks generally between two and 20 and specifically between five and 10. Rule number four, throw away most of those technical indicators because the majority of them are garbage. I learned this the hard way. I spent a number of years early in my career trying to find the perfect combination of technical indicators. And there's a lot of people out there who sell technical indicators. And what they're selling, in my opinion, is the dream of the holy grail, an indicator that's right 100% of the time that never has losses, but let's face it, that's not reality. And, and even if there was an indicator that was really, really good, it's only going to be as good as the trader who adheres to it. Because if you don't follow every single signal, your success is going to really differ from whatever that indicator says it could possibly do. So I try to keep it simple. I took away all of those excessive indicators, all those custom indicators, and I brought it down just to the basics. In a way, this felt like I could see more clearly because all those indicators created this lens where I was getting this analysis paralysis. Too much stuff was going on and I couldn't see what was right in front of me. So by taking away those indicators and focusing simply on the nine moving average, exponential, the 20 EMA, the 200 EMA, volume weighted average price, volume bars, and maybe throwing on the MACD, moving average convergence divergence indicator. Keeping it simple is so important because at the end of the day, what you really wanna be focusing on are the candlestick patterns themselves. If you're overlaying so many indicators that you can't even read the charts, well, you done screwed up. You gotta go back to basics. So I encourage you to keep it simple and focus on what's most important, the candlesticks, and of course, the actual depth of the market, which is in level two. You're not even gonna see that on the chart. So as important as charts are for identifying patterns, ultimately, where I'm executing trades is on the level two. Number five, when I break my rules, I tend with 80% likelihood of losing twice as much as if I had stopped the moment before I broke my rule. Now I've done a lot of tracking on breaking rules. Breaking rules in trading, what does that mean? Well, I have a rule, for instance, of a daily max loss, but every now and then I'll get emotionally fueled. I'll say, no, I'm gonna take one or two more trades, but with an 80% likelihood, I will double my loss on the day if I keep trading. So I really have to stick to cutting it at my max loss and I encourage you to do the same. Now, I have also found this true when I break another rule, which is knowing when to walk away. So when I am trading on any given day, I'll make money, have some winners, have some gains, and naturally I'll have a couple of losses. So at what point do you walk away and at what point do you continue trading? My rule of thumb is that if I give back more than half of my day, I walk away at least with profit in my pocket. Yes, the glass is half empty, but at least it's half full because I have more than I had two hours or earlier. So I stop if I've given back half. I can't tell you how many times I've given back half and I said, I'll take one more trade. I set up for a Hail Mary pass and I end up giving back the other half I still had and going red on the day, doubling the initial loss. So with statistics in my favor, knowing the metrics that if I continue trading when I break rules, I'm likely just to continue to lose. It's helped me be a more disciplined trader. 
So I really encourage you in your own trading, when you set rules, you have to stick to them. There's no sense in having rules if you're not gonna follow them. So setting rules of max share size, max daily loss, max weekly loss, you know, at what point do you walk away if you've given back half, et cetera? Set the rules and follow the rules. Now, all the rules that I created were from my own experiences, just of realizing that if I give back more than half, I get emotionally triggered. I'm not really as dialed in as I as I was beforehand. I could probably change that rule to a, I give back 40%, but it's easier to remember half than 40 because you know, you know you're up five grand, so if you're up only 2,500, you know you're giving back half. The numbers are easy. Keep it simple, but follow your rules. Number six, if it's not obvious to you what stock you should be trading, then there is not an A quality setup and there's no reason to force trades. You do not have to trade every single day and on days when you trade, sometimes you'll take a couple trades, you might make a little, lose a little. It's, it's just not a day where anything is really happening and if there's nothing that's obvious, the best thing to do is to walk away. I find without question, I make the most money when I'm trading the stocks that are obvious. And if we think about that in terms of stock selection, my requirements for being interested in trading a stock, of course, I want to see the price between two and 20. I'd like to see the stock has news. I'd like to see that it has high relative volume. I'd like to see that it's already up at least 10% because I found that stocks that are up 10% have the highest likelihood of continuing higher. And I want to see the float is under 20 million shares. That's my sort of five criteria for a good supply demand imbalance. And if there's not a stock that meets those five criteria and is super obvious, then the best course of action is to wait until tomorrow. The market will be here. There is no sense in forcing it. Number seven, track your metrics and analyze your trading data. Everything I've shared with you today is the result of me analyzing 24,268 trades worth of data. I know without a doubt the time of day when I make the most money, the day of the week that I make the most money, the months of the year that I make the most money, which by the way, I tend to make the most money from October, November, December, January, February, March, with the exception of June in 2020, which was an incredible year. But that was again, an exception, not the norm. I found that summers are typically slower, but if I didn't have my data showing me that, I might think it, but I might think a lot of things, but I wouldn't know if they were fact. This trading data that you have is accessible to you. There are secrets in there. In fact, it was in my own trading metrics early on that I discovered, even though I was losing money in whole, there were aspects of my trading where I was making money. So if you looked at all of your metrics and you saw, wow, I make money on stocks between five and 20, but then I give back all the profit when I trade stocks over 20, you would now know there's an action item I can take from this information, which is to stop trading stocks over $20 a share. Do that for a month and then see what happens. All of a sudden now you're a profitable trader. You know, these things you would think they would just occur to us, but when it's right there in the data, that's when it becomes the most obvious. So I encourage you to track your analytics, monitor your data, and always look for opportunities to become a better trader. This is the reality with trading. This is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a lifelong career. And even though I've been doing it for a really long time, I still feel like even I can get better and I can learn from other traders out there. You'll never be a perfect trader. There is no such thing. There's always room for improvement. For those of you who are at the beginning of your learning curve, hit the thumbs up and check out this episode right here that YouTube thinks you're gonna love. I'll see you for the next one real soon.